fighting 50 jewels from the body retreat is here to make another super soup. Now, sometimes if you're feeling a bit low, soup is a great comfort food, isn't it? Mm. Is that how you see it? Because in my mind, I always think, oh, I feel, feel a bit kind of under the weather, give me a bowl of soup. Mm. I think that um, soup does two things when you're not feeling well. One is that um, if, like myself, if you've got childhood memories of being given soup when you're yes. unwell and you're a little girl, that it can take you to that happy place in your mind, regardless of what it is you're actually eating. And then also, when you're a bit under the weather, um, lightening the digestive load is a good thing to do. Yeah. Um, you might want and be craving some sort of carbohydrate, but that's more because your energy level is low. And you'll think, if I have a piece of toast, it'll give me that little energy boost. But guess what? An hour later, okay. you're craving another piece of toast. So soup is great. So that's not just me being greedy. No, that's, <laughs> that's chemistry. <laughs> that's chemistry. <laughs> that's that's biology. <laughs> that's, yeah. Yeah, that's what's happening there. So, you know, when your your energy levels are low because your body's fighting infection or you're maybe recovering from accident or illness or something like that, you do want to lighten the load, but also increase the amount of energy that you're giving your body. Okay, that yeah. makes sense. And this is where soups are really good because they lighten the digestive load, you don't need to do a lot of chewing. Um, but you can put, you know, fill your soups with lovely fresh vegetables so you get lots of antioxidants, vitamins and minerals. Yeah. Um, but then you also want to have something that's sustaining. So that's where I like to add in. Um, make sure we've got protein, fat and fibre and hitting those bases within the soup. Okay, okay. sounds good to me. So the soup that I'm going to make today, I call this recovery tomato soup. <laughs> like that? Um, because when I was a little girl and you were unwell and couldn't go to school. You had to be, my grandmother used to say, if you're well enough to walk, you're well enough to work. Okay. Quite a strict household. So you had to be sick enough to either be, uh, get in, keep in, stay in bed, or make it as far as the sofa. And I would always be given a can of Heinz tomato soup. It's like everybody's childhood thing. <laughs> yeah, Heinz tomato soup. And so I think that for me, that whole thing about being unwell, being looked after, being nurtured, being off school, yeah. was all tied up in this cream of tomato soup. Mm. But it's incredibly high in sugar. You know, when you look at the sugar content yeah, of Heinz massive. cream of tomato soup, it is very high. So I wanted to make something. I had an operation a few years ago, and I was thinking about post recovery, and I. Knew I'd be craving the, the yeah, can so soup. Give me the tomato give soup. Me the tomato soup. So I thought I'm going to make a version for myself that kind of um, does everything I needed to do, but I don't need to have all of that sugar. And that's where my recovery tomato soup came in. Brilliant. So that's what okay. I So yeah. what goes into it? So what goes into it? Let me show you. We started off here with quite a lot of onions and a uh, half a leek and a couple of sticks of celery okay one big fat clove of garlic and we've softened that down with a teaspoon of the coconut oil and a squidge of the um sugar salt no sugar involved no yes. sugar involved no sugar at all salt so that all the salt is doing is drawing out moisture so that we don't brown the veggies oh, okay. we want to keep them nice and kind of um clear yeah so we soften those off and we'll put them to back over here for a moment um as you would expect there's going to be tomatoes and yeah a can of tomatoes i think is absolutely fine buy decent quality tomatoes because you are going to find that there's more robust flavor in a better yeah. quality can yeah. than perhaps if you're using have i got, have I got a better quality yes yeah. Yeah. Got a nice quality just tomato. checking because this came straight out of my store <laughs> <laughs> um, and then so that's our kind of basic tomato soup. We're going to be using the bouillon. Again, um, it's the marigold bouillon that we're using here, which is a real favourite. Real favourite, favourite of the body retreat. So that's your basic tomato soup. Now, how are we sort of pumping up the health benefits? To make the cream of tomato, I'm going to use a whole can of full fat coconut milk. Wonderful. <laughs> because it's going to give that lovely creamy texture, but the fat in this is going to give that satiety yeah. to the brain as well. And it's going to feel like really creamy and really delicious and lovely. Perfect. We're also going to add in a half can of chickpeas. Right. Now, as you know, um, I like to peel my chickpeas. Gloriously <laughs> peel all the chickpeas. If you've seen our other videos, you know this can be a lifetime of chickpeas. But we're ahead of the game today. We've, we've, we've done it. Peel the chickpeas. 
Um, when you get a can of chickpeas at home, you can probably see there, that's the kind of the um, juice the chickpeas are in. Now, chickpeas are a great source of protein, but they also do contain starch called leptin, and that leptin, form of sugar, can lead to gassing and bloating. Okay. Um, so if that's a, an issue for you, don't avoid the pulses, just pop them out. I left one behind here. Um, that little skin, all the lectins are underneath there, then blanch them and it's boiling hot water and now we're, we're good to go. Brilliant. So that's adding in our protein content. Okay. And then in terms of the flavour, I like to just kind of, I, I don't want this to be a Thai soup, no. but I like a little bit of warmth coming yeah. underneath, which I think is really little, nice, a little bit of oomph. So we're going to use some freshly grated ginger yeah. and some fresh chopped chilli. Brilliant. And that's really, the flavours are coming from the vegetables, from the tomato and just these little bit of spicing. But if you want to make it even more spicy, then you, you can, can adapt that. You can adapt that. Okay. So what's great about this soup now is literally everything's just going in. Softened off our veggies. And then this will be handy to me to, to wash the recycling. <laughs> Let me just pop that in there. And we're going to pop in our bouillon. So, how much is that? Is that about half a litre? It is, yeah. And then our can. Oh, just mind that doesn't fly over here. They normally get a bit That's it. Tracy's just stood back there. Yeah, I stand back because whenever I do it, the, the sort of cream on the top stays on the top and the water rushes out and then goes away you. So they are not very brave. Our chickpeas. Um, I've chopped up a little bit of the chilli. Now I'm not very brave with chilies. Well you never know what you're getting with fresh chilli, do you? That's, That's really also the case. And what you can do is if you do like chilli, you can always just chop a little bit and put it on the top of the soup and have yeah, little sure. punchy bites of the, the chilli there. And then I'm going to grate in some fresh ginger, but I'm not going to peel it. Okay. Because actually the skin of the ginger is a great source of fibre. Okay. So we want and that's retaining all the goodness. Absolutely. It? So it, provided you've got a nice, uh, fresh, healthy piece of ginger, no reason to peel it. I've just got to tell you, I passed the test. <laughs> all of the tests. <laughs> ginger came out of my fridge and I passed the test. It's fresh. So it I'm okay. Very fresh. So again, I just want that like nice, flavour underneath, so maybe not even you know, maybe a centimetre or two, but again to your There's personal preference. This is fabulous. Though. So you can see there, I've just got everything going. I'll we'll tip that up again, I think, if we can. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to put that back on the heat. So I think it probably took us about maybe five minutes to soften down those vegetables because we wanted those nice and slow and soft. Three hours to peel the chickpeas. Three hours to peel the chickpeas. <laughs> Get a small child to peel the chickpeas. <laughs> or have it as your mindful moment. Yes. And you know, moments. stand and look out at nature and be in the moment and peel the chickpeas. Uh, this, this is where we differ. <laughs> Just this child mindful. I'm going to sit here and, and pod all the uh, chickpeas and I'm like, oh for goodness sake, get those shells off. <laughs> <laughs> so we wanted um, five minutes Oops. Sorry, I'm gonna be in camera when I'm no, saying it's okay. That's all right. We can hear you again if you go off. Five minutes to soften the vegetables and then literally everything else. Do you want that up a little bit? Yeah. All right. And then we're gonna just let that fry. It's looking really pretty already. Mm. And then we we'll just give that a little blend. I like my soup quite fine because I want it to be reminiscent of the canvas. Yes, um, but of course if your preference is to have a little bit more texture in there then you know you do what you like to do. Okay. So um so we're gonna cook that for five minutes. We'll just set that to do its thing, put the lid on, keep the heat in and then that's gonna be doing that. Okay. So just explain to me um you know why is it so important to, to put this bit of protein into the soup? Um a couple of things. One is that one of the, the key things is around uh, protein oil is the building block for cell health. 
Okay, so all of our cells, we need to have good, good quality protein. And I like to think of that every meal should contain some form of protein. That's something I would aim for. I think that's for. something that most people um, and most nutritionists will say, that if you actually have that little bit of protein in each meal, mm -hmm. that sustains you, doesn't it? And then to the next. And that's what it does as well. As well as helping for cell health, it's very sustaining. Yeah. Because how the body will um, sort of take the energy out of vegetables and carbohydrates and grains um it's quite quick yeah and so we would all know that if you're familiar with the glycemic index the glycemic load those sort of fast acting um uh, sources of energy whereas proteins and fat they're much slower release into the system which is why for example if you go out in the morning having had a bowl of um cornflakes and toast or something like that you feel and you've got loads of energy because it's coming to your system really quickly and by the time you arrive in the office you're flying. Yeah. 11 o'clock you're really warm. You, you're you're on. Really lunch at 11 o'clock. You're looking for toast and coffee and tea. Yeah. Whereas if you change that around and have a more protein based breakfast or something like eggs or buckwheat or something then because they go into your system that bit slower you've got that more sustained energy mm -hmm. so that will keep you going for longer. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. so it is worth you know popping something like chickpeas or beans or something into your your soups to boost that. Yeah that into energy. soups, into stews, into cassoulets um, and, and plant-based proteins are, I think, really underused. You know, we often think, I mean, I grew up in a household of meat and two veg. Yeah, I think <laughs> most of us did, didn't we? It was just kind of what? It's, exactly. And, I, and I, I do eat meat, um, but I'm a responsible meat eater, and I think that we eat too much meat. Mm -hmm. So I like to, every day, have a source of plant protein. Yeah. Um, and, you know, beans and pulses are such an economical way to be able to add in a great source of protein, a great source of fibre, cheaply, effectively and quickly. Yeah. Because you don't even need to be a good cook to cook with them. You know, like a piece of meat where perhaps you need to be a little bit more yeah, careful. Yeah, a bit more skill more. But I think also there's there's a new trend. I'm seeing it um, just listening to my daughter and, and my son's um, girlfriend into slow cooking. Mm -hmm. You know, to actually prepping things before they go to work, popping it in a slow cook or an instant pot or something and this is where beans are great aren't they because they really they can bulk up a meal but they're, they're substantial enough that they're not going to break down if you cook them for a long time so yeah. and they get they sort of always get better yeah the longer that they are cooked I mean, what i love about the chickpea i use a lot of chickpeas is that they're very neutral in flavor so you won't even know yeah you can there's chickpea in sure. the dish um, but what you will get is the benefit of that little bit of protein. So on like a can of tomato soup where you're going to be perhaps left wanting half an hour to an hour later, a can of, you know, a Excuse me, I'm wanting now. <laughs> And we've got all these wonderful smells and making soups, and really, I just like to sit down and eat it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love it. Five minutes is a long time to have to wait. <laughs> <laughs> well, on paper, it seems super fast, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, you actually sure. have to do your five minutes. Let me get some spoons ready for some taste. Okay. And then we're. We are doing this in real time. Mm -hmm. So we could always cut and come back when the, the soup's finished, but I think it's quite interesting to see how things are made in real time. So you know that if you're coming back from work and you're not trying to get a, a meal on the table quickly, mm -hmm. you know, you've got family coming in and it's actually great to see that you can make something fairly wholesome. Mm -hmm. in kind of 10 minutes, can't you? And this is a great thing. I like to, I encourage um, a lot of our treaters to make a pan of soup on a Sunday. If you're in the kitchen anyway, perhaps making a Sunday lunch or a Sunday dinner for family, then why not have a pan of soup going on the side? On yeah, the true. Um, because it doesn't take any attention. Once you've done a bit of chopping, popped it away, it can do its own thing. Yeah, you don't even have to blend, you can literally leave yeah. it. Um, and then either freeze it or pop it in the fridge and you've then got a couple of meals or lunches, you know, for later in the week. And also, everything that we've used so far is still covered, it is, isn't it? Because this is everything that I would mm. have in the house. Yeah. Um, every week, you know, I'm always buying sort of leeks and celery and mm. um, coconut milks in the store cupboard, bullions always mm. in the cupboard, I've always got garlic, I've got chilli, you know, it's, it's really easy, isn't it? 
there's, there's nights when you come in and you go, oh my god, what am I going to make tonight? If you can make something that's packed with veg and it's, it's using not what's in your fridge or mm. using what's in your store cupboard, it's really good, isn't it? And you know it's going to satisfy you and sustain you. And it's not expensive. Mm. So I'm just going to share a little top tip because we've used some nice fresh chilli because you do have fresh chilli here. Um, See, I've got a ticking <laughs> box here. But you can just as easily use chilli 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 chilli. So that would be absolutely fine. Now fresh chilli... Um, fresh ginger, not everybody wants to buy the fresh ginger. I think it's worthwhile even just going and getting a knob like this. I just love it. Now, if you live on your own or you don't like a lot of Thai or Asian style food, I keep my ginger in the freezer. Yeah. Because then, particularly for something like this, I'm just going to grate it in from frozen. Yeah. Okay. It's going to retain the nutritional value of it. I'm still going to get, I might need to use a little bit more just yeah. to get that gingery hit. But, you know, rather than, I mean, how often have you perhaps opened up the bottom of the oh, jar and there's a little kind of novel of ginger yeah, in the bottom and it's gone stringy. It's all got, exactly, and you're like, oh, I don't want to use that. So use it for about a week or so and then pop it in the freezer. Yeah. So it can be a freezer slash store covered um, dish. I think we're ready. Great. It's always nice to know that there's certain things I can actually do as well, like having a fresh chili and, and fresh ginger. <laughs> It's not always known for getting it right. I'm just going to show you the soup before we actually um, blitz it up because you could, if you wanted, just have that soup nice and coarse and chunky like that. But I like it. Do you know what I'm going to do? Just before you blend that, I'm going to grab the camera and take a photograph just so that um, pop back on the trip. This, this, really, this really is in real time and i'm sorry we should be a bit more prepared for this but then i can show you exactly exactly what the soup looks like i'll put a picture into the video just so you can see so it's, it's also just a little safety tip it's also a good idea just to let the soup be off the heat for a yeah, couple of minutes sure. before you blend you could blend this in the matching mix, in a blender, you could even blend it in some stages in the Nutribullet, but this is fantastic. Stick blenders are just my favourite, they're so easy. Because there's so little washing up as well. <laughs> yeah, but we all like little washing up. So it's just about to get noisy here, I'm about to sort of blend up. So there you go, you can see that we have now got a nice smooth textured soup. So I always like to, there's a little bit of seasoning for the salt went in with the vegetables to soften at the beginning. Okay. Um, we've put in some of our nice warming spices, but I'm going to season at the very end because then you can do it to your personal preference. So you might, this soup might need a little bit of salt um, or pepper or and pepper. You might want a little bit of extra chilli. Oh my god, that is so nice. <laughs> Do you know what that is? It's like the uh, the grown-up version of Heinz mm. 57 varieties. It's like, it's the grown-up version of, of Heinz soup, isn't it? Mm. I think you can take a little bit more pepper. I don't think it needs any more salt. I think the bouillon's done its job and that little bit of salt at the beginning. Okay. 
Because that's the thing, isn't it? If you're putting a, a bouillon into a soup, you often don't need quite so much salt. Yeah, really. or any salt at all. No, because sometimes I use, I don't think this one is a reduced salt, is it? No, I have got a reduced salt here. Okay, can I have another mm -hmm. And I'm starving. <laughs> you can't taste it. It's not strong of coconut, it's not strong of chili, it's not strong of ginger. It's just got a little bit of a warmth that and it is really absolutely nice. delicious. Mm. I can't tell you how nice that is. That is so good. Great for you. I mean, it's going to give you that little hint of chili if you're feeling under the weather. Mm. Easy to digest, but satisfying because we've got that lovely full fat coconut milk. It's got that bit of protein in there. Super soups. And I'm assuming pretty low calorie. Yes, as well. Mm. But sustaining. Sustaining is it's, it's all eating super soup. <laughs> you try saying that quickly. Jill, this is absolutely delicious. And, um, the recipe is below the video. Also links back to the body retreat. Go and have a look. There's a new website, lots of things on there. Conscious cooking. Our conscious cooking blog where I share lots of different types of recipes. Mm -hmm. So go and have a look. And thank you for, for looking in on Fighting 50, appreciate that as well. Any questions you've got for Jules, either about the recipe or about nutrition in general, please drop them below the video and I will get them answered. Thank you so much for watching, Jules. Thank you for coming back in. <laughs> it's a pleasure. Uh, and making my lunch. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully this is my lunch. This is the same. You're not taking this out of my way. It's definitely my lunch. <laughs> Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.